As a kid, I have very fond memories of my older brother and I sitting around my grandfather's big chair by a fireplace, listening to him read stories from Hemingway, Elgin Gates, Robert Rourke, etc. Those stories fueled a young boy's dreams to hunt the wild places and to see things that these great authors of the old days wrote about. Regretfully, my grandfather and my brother both passed away by the time I was about 13 years old, never getting to realize their dreams, well, our dreams, and that kind of, in a big way, inspired me to really ignited my desire to chase those wild places. I kept reading those books my whole life, and as you can see, I've done a lot of hunting, and i really done it all because Three guys sat around as an old man and two little boys and basically he told us tales and ignited something in me that lasted a lifetime. Um, I kept reading those books. I was particularly interested in Elgin Gates' original writings about traveling up the Wakhan Corridor into Afghanistan and Tajikistan on his epic Marco Polo Argali hunt. Um, fascinated me. The, the Asia fascinated me. The Pamir Mountains, which is called the rooftop of the world, fascinated me. It's the Holy Kush. In 07, all the stars lined up and I made the pilgrimage to Tajikistan with two good friends, Craig Schaefer and Brown Delosia. Um, very long trip, very arduous trip. Um, so many details about the trip that would, would fill a book. I only have a few minutes on a video to speak of it, so I will speak of it. Um, I never in my wildest dreams ever imagined that I would harvest an Argali like this one. Um, I had gone there with Robert Anderson's book, Wind, Dust, and Snow. And if you're a fan of sheep hunting, you all know Robert Anderson. I was lucky enough to make it into Great Rams 2, which is North American sheep hunting. He had then came out with Wind, Dust, and Snow at an earlier time, which is all about the world of, you know, Argali hunting, Ibex hunting, basically your, your, your great rams of Asia. I took this book with me and it was, you know, I, at night I'd take out my flashlight and I'd read it, never dreaming ever that I would ever get a ram of these proportions or ever thinking that I would make it into Robert Anderson's second book, Wind, Dust, and Snow, Part Two, which kind of prompted this video because that book has just came out and I've got a big full page picture in it and I couldn't be more proud. Um, it was it's the, basically the, it was the defining moment in my sheep hunting passion. I think my grandfather, my brother would kind of smile wherever they're at knowing that The youngest one ended up making into a book that features Elgin Gates and all the other great sheep hunters of old. So it's such an honor. I want to thank Robert Anderson for including me in the book. But more, I want to thank my grandfather and my brother, um, especially my grandfather, for fueling a young boy's dreams and the hunting gods that procured a ram of that size and magnitude. Um, truly a uh, giant Argali. Um, a little bit about the history of the hunt. I know I don't have too long here. I flew into Turkey, which we then traveled to Osh and Bishkek and made the long arduous trip into the Hot Springs camp. If you're familiar with Marco Polo hunting, the Hot Springs camp is the premier hunting camp set in the Pamir Mountains at about 13,000 feet. It is built on a hot springs, so it's kind of a really neat thing in the middle of nowhere. Um,
I immediately got to be friendly with the two guys that ran the cab, Otto Beck and Shodi. Um, they had asked me what I wanted in a Ram. I had said that I was looking not so much for length, even though we all want a 60 inch Ram, if you get it. I was looking for an old world Argali shaped Ram with age and mass. Um, they had said they knew just the Ram, but there was a slight problem. They had been after this Ram for a long time. The Ram lived on the border of Afghanistan at about 17, 5, 18,000 feet. They had tried with other hunters to get the Ram without any success. The last hunter was actually King Juan Carlos of Spain um, a few weeks before I had got into camp. Again, they could never get on this Ram. He was the lead Ram of a band. They would get on him. There's no trees. There's no nothing. It's your way above any thing that would grow. It's literally, people think they, like Montana's big sky country. You haven't seen the Pamir Mountains. You can look up forever into heaven. Um, there was no way to really get close to this Ram. I agreed that I thought it was worth going after and we proceeded to go after that Ram. Um, after a, a long, long Jeep ride and a very long hike and a very long crawl, we got into position on this Ram on the side of the mountain. Now, if he goes over the mountain, he was into Afghanistan, which was a no-no. We couldn't go into Af Afghanistan at the time. Still, it's not the best idea to go into Afghanistan. Um, my first shot was around 450 yards, and I grazed right underneath him and scored him across the bottom through his hair. He took off, leading his band up the hill, never, give, never stopping moving and giving me another shot. At the very top of the hill, he stopped and looked back with all his rams behind him. I was in a prone position with a rifle from a dear friend of mine, Lester Knipe, Knife Mountain Rifles and Knife, Knife Rifles in general. Best gunsmith I've ever dealt with and I've used so many. Lester Knipe's a dear friend and the best gunsmith I know. Laid down, I had known my rifle, I had known my ballistics, and when I pulled the trigger on that day, the final range calling was 890 yards. The, all I can remember is laying in the prone position. When the gun went off, I lost my, you know, you lose everything when you're shooting a lightweight mountain rifle and a heavy caliber. And all I remember is Autobeck, who was a, a big, strong Tajikistan guy, smacking me on the back and picking me up and shaking me. And I didn't, you know, I, I was in shock. I didn't know what had happened. And they just kept saying, down, down. Here, the ram took it right through both shoulders. The distance was so extreme that the, the triple shock Barnes bullet did not even expand. It pushed through him like a pencil. And that ram dropped and slid down the hole, the, you know, slid down the hole, the hill in the snow. Um, they were just shaking me. They could not believe it. I couldn't believe it. Um, when we finally hiked up to the ram, we saw what I had done and what they had been chasing for so long and not able to get. He is truly an epic Argali. Um, first thing that Shodi and Autobeck said to me was, your brother helped you with that shot, that's for sure. And I gotta agree, I could have never made that shot. I had studied my ballistics, they were meticulously hand-loaded rounds, but in reality, 890 yards at elevation, you know, that was a, Luckiest shot of my life, but the bottom line is the Rams here. Um, they actually signed my book, the first Wind, Dust, and Snow, and I'll show a picture of that. You know, two signatures confirming the distance of the shot. It's the longest Marco shot that they have ever heard of and that I've ever heard of. On that trip, I took a Knipe rifle. This is made by Lester Knipe again. I'll show pictures of this. Started out with a, a 700 long action. This act rifle is completely skeletonized. There's a blind magazine to reduce weight. It's got a Swarovski scope on it, and it's got a Leisure barrel on it. This is seven and three quarter pounds with the scope on it, chambered in 300 Weatherby mag, shooting a hand-loaded Barnes triple shock at about 3,050 feet per second.
If you're looking for anything from a custom 1911 to the best bench rest rifle, to anything, Lester is a craftsman beyond compare and a dear good friend of mine. Um, Lester was with me on that hunt in the spirit of building me that rifle and that's another reason why I could accomplish that shot. So um, thank you Lester, I love you buddy. Um, to get back into things, like I said, what's prompted this video is the new Wind, Dust and Snow by Robert Anderson came out and I've got a full page picture in there with my Ram. It's truly a huge compliment, thank you Robert Anderson. Thank you Brown Delosier and thank you Craig Schaefer for being my brothers that went with me. Truly, it's the, it was the highlight hunt of my life, and uh, that's all I can really say. Thanks for looking. I really appreciate it. My gigantic Marco Polo Argali, Ram of a Lifetime. To this day, that Ram is still being used by Safari, um, the outfitter, in their advertisement. So for an outfitter to be using the, sa the same Ram that was shot seven years ago over and over and over again, he truly is a, an epic, epic Marco Polo. Thanks again.